People's Court with the Cutlers. This is the case of Gurridge versus Carter. Mr. Gurridge, you and your girlfriend have been together almost a year, and you're living together? Yes, ma'am. And what I note from the court file is that there's a 19-year age difference between you and the defendant. Is that correct? That's correct. Why do you think your lovely young girlfriend is cheating? I think she's cheating because uh, she has a tell as in uh, when she gets mad or she's trying to divert her, the, the argument away, she'll throw her hands up and stomp out of the room. It's like a defense mechanism. So you believe when she does that and stomps out the room, she's not telling the truth? Very much so. And does this happen regularly? Probably every time that we argue. I am completely honest with him about everything. I have nothing to hide. Well, he says that you have a tell and that he knows when you're not being honest. So there have at least been a few occasions where you haven't been honest because otherwise he wouldn't know what your tell is. I think he's reading my tell wrong. Personally, I throw my hands up and I stomp away because I'm sick of fighting. Why sit there and keep the fight going? Why sit there and try and tell somebody something that they're not believing you about? Why sit there and be told I'm lying when I'm not? All Believe right. it or not, she starts fights. She just, starts fights? She starts fights just to leave the house. There's this one incident when she came home with a friend and I had some friends over. I go sit out by the garage just to get away from everything and uh, she comes out and starts bringing up random stupid stuff. I get to the point to where I take off. Okay. So I'm gone for a, a few hours. And is everybody gone at that point? Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. So it's, she's home by herself. Right. I take off. And when I come back, can I show you something? Sure. You have an exhibit? Yes. All right. Go to the plasma, please. When I come back, okay, usually she, she sleeps in a long shirt and, and shorts or whatever, you know? Okay. When I come back, She's wearing this nightie. You guys want to open the door? Sleeping. And uh, she has no bottoms on. No, excuse me. I'm going to say something. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. We'll get to you. She has on a nightie and no underwear. Yes, ma'am. And what, what time do you come back? Uh, it was about 7 in the morning. So you've been out overnight. Not all night. But it's, it's overnight. Pretty much, yeah. Okay. And you come home. Does she wear that for you? The blue? I, no. Had you ever Actually, seen that first before? Off, that's not no. even realistic, okay? You, I hold, thought, hold on, hold on. Stomach we, we ulcers, Ms. Carter, just I, Ms. Carter. The first thing I found. Ms. Ms. Carter, we will give you a chance. We're going to give you a chance, but we want to hear his side. You'll get your chance. I promise you. Then I'll go. So, like, when I'm not going to sit here. Ms. Carter. Ms. Carter. Thank you. Please let me go. We've told you we're going to give you, you will an have opportunity your chance. Yeah. to talk. Just but hold we have me to my opportunity now. No, we run this courtroom. Like this. No, we run this courtroom. Step behind the podium. You will get your chance. We want to hear him. All right. The question that was pending. Mm -hmm. Have you ever seen that nighty before? No. She's never worn that with you? No. All right, so you come home. She's... Is she awake? Is she asleep? Where no, is she? she? She's, she's sleeping, and... I go into the bathroom, and when I come out, <clears throat> she's, uh, she's waking up. All right, okay. come back to your party. Now is your turn. Thank you. First off, I needed to do laundry, so I had no clean yeah. underwear. So if he actually paid attention, he would have known I had no underwear on in the first nightgown. Second off, I puked on my nightgown. I'm half asleep and it's dark. Okay, I'm not going to wear a short shirt when I have no underwear on. I'm going to find something longer. That was the first thing I found that was clean and threw it on and went back to bed. So you did not put that on for a lover? No, and I figured, okay, anyone comes to my house, it's gonna be him. So I don't have to worry about anyone else coming and seeing me like that. If anyone sees me like that, it's gonna be him. Did What's you explain deal? that to your boyfriend? Several times. And you didn't believe that? No. The hands came up and... After the fifth time, what would you do? Okay. But you're not buying she any of so that. so many clothes. There's other incidences, too. You know? All right, I was about to say, do you have something else? Yeah, we're walking down the back, the, our little back driveway. Okay, there's tall grass, right? Um, our house is, like, surrounded by poison oak, you know, the, like a barrier thing, whatever. That's quite a barrier. Well, she comes up with poison oak. Arms, legs, behind, you know? And it's like, how do you get poison oak on your behind if you're not... So, how, how do you... you... Go ahead. You asked the she question. Got I couldn't tell you. She said she got it from her mom's cat. What is she doing with the cat? <laughs> okay, uh, wait. Before you go there, how do you think she got it? Because you have a thought in your mind. What is that thought? 
I think she was playing in the Poison Oak with someone or something. Who would go have sex in Poison Oak, though? That doesn't make sense. <laughs> Cutler, I can't... I uh, now, we've heard, in this court, we've heard about people having sex in strange places. True. I would, I would grant you that. Grant? I don't know that we've heard of anybody having sex in Poison Oak. Okay, tell me, you, what is your testimony regarding the Poison Oak? How did you get Poison First Oak off, the all Poison over Oak you? originated right here on my arms from holding the cat. Okay. Okay, I got fair skin. I get it easy. Okay. Also, he's always working, like, in the weeds in Poison Oak. He doesn't get it. So I think I either got it from him or the cat. I know I sure in the hell didn't get it from having sex out in Poison Oak. Okay, well, let me ask you this. How does it go from your arm to your backside? I have no idea. Like, honestly. So, you, you want me to no tell idea you? I have no happened. idea. Like, straight do up, you I don't. See... Sorry. Do you see why your proposition doesn't sound nearly as logical as his, that you got it because you were laying down in it? I would have grabbed a blanket or something. I'm not that stupid to go have sex out in the Poison Oak and, like, come on. I don't know. I've lived in the mountains my whole life. Like, I have some common sense. I know how bad I get poison oak. Like, but no, and why would I go out there? Come on. Like, I would go in my car first. Like, seriously, think of something better. All right, but you, but you don't, don't believe, believe her. No. And have you found anything else to make you think um, that your girlfriend is, in fact, cheating? There was a, another incident where I was putting a radio in a car and um, I was looking for a screwdriver and I looked in the center council and there was, like, five packs of condoms. And she says, uh, oh, those are old. Here, take them. And she gave them to me. I was like, okay. And I just threw them away. Do you all use condoms? No. Okay, Miss Carter, uh, are you riding around town with condoms in your car? Actually, I was. They were in there from when I first got my car. There was so much stuff in my center console, okay? Like, I would have had a dig to find them. And they were old. If he looked at them, they were expired, okay? <laughs> That's before I even met him. Like, I'm sorry I don't clean out my center console in my car very much. Well, you know, it really sounds like you were ready to roll at all times with them in your car. <laughs> well, she did mention that if it wasn't outside with a poison oak, it, it might be in the car. car. So, is that... Okay, that does sound pretty bad, but it honestly... It does. Yeah. Honestly, no, they were expired. They were seriously, like, from when I first got that car. No, so, if he would have looked at the date, they, they were expired. They came with the car. They, they came with the car. <laughs> that, that's some dealer prep right there. There you go. All right, so, do you have any other... So, Reasons to believe she's cheating. Can I show you something else? Absolutely. Step over to the plasma again. <laughs> he came prepared for court today. Yeah, got his evidence lined <laughs> we up. We got two plasmas. Let's see what you got. I came home, okay? And we live on a, on, on a dusty road. It's really dusty. So we're coming down the road. I'm walking up to the door, and um, something caught my eye on her car. Okay. And I look over, and I see handprints on her car. And the fender is all shiny. This is the hood of her car. That's, right the, that's the top of the car. Yes. And then we go down to the, the fender. quarter panel. This part you're saying is clean. I can see a reflection, so you're saying it's yeah, clean. Yeah. Well, there's a different shot that you can see the handprints better. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so it looks like you've got some handprints on the there's top of the car. Right. But you can see in the dust, but on the right. side on the, of the car... It's on the fender, it's all shiny. ...clean and shiny. Yeah. So that doesn't make sense. Why would the top be dusty and not the side? Well, she's, um... You know? <laughs> oh. So, Are you saying that she, her body or clothes rub that side rub clean? Rub clean, yeah. And then the dust up here is her handprints. It is. How do you... I mean, if I saw that, I wouldn't jump to that conclusion. Okay, well... Well, I had a girlfriend, okay? Okay. And, and this happened to me before. <laughs> okay. I put her out on the hood, and the hand patterns were the same. All right. So you know? you've seen this so before. I, yes, I've seen it before. So this isn't speculation on your part. You saw this, and, and you were like, oh, I know what that is. Yeah. I recognize that. <laughs> then you've done that. Yeah. I, now, now you getting the visual? I got a visual. You got the visual. I want to get it out the my head. Foot of the car. Yeah. Hand, look, uh -huh. look, look, I'm look. looking. Handprints on the car, you know, <laughs> in the dust, but this part is clean. I can't. You can't? I just, okay. I cannot. All right, thank you so Mr. much. Gertz. All right. Miss Carter, you've already mentioned that, look, I wouldn't go outside with this poison oak. I was going I would do it in my car if I had to. Mm -hmm. How do you have handprints 
on a dusty car, but the side of your car is clean. I have no idea how the hand marks got on my car. I thought he was talking about like where I had my bags on my car and I grabbed them and like it swished or something. And I walked out and I seen that. Okay, and then I you, said maybe. You, you do have to admit that it's odd that the top of your car is dusty and the side of your car is, you know, it's actually got a gleam to it. And we have Mr. Gurich's near expert testimony that he's seen <laughs> that pattern before. <laughs> And I mean, it's not just one handprint. It's then like maybe it was handprints was... from him. Well, well, that's a good point. Did you have sex on your girlfriend's truck? That's a no. All right. So you're saying that's... it's not you? No, it's not and, me. And not anybody you've been with. And the next day, the hood was cleaned. Yeah, I washed my car the next day. All right. So. So you got rid of the evidence. Basically. You um, actually, I got rid of the accusation and the reminder that it was probably him, some girl on the hood of my car. So that's what you thought? I don't know if someone comes at you accusing you of something and you have no idea and you go out and see that and that's what they're saying it's you doing, what would you expect? How low of a person do you think I am to think I would lie about stuff like that or do something like that to you? Like, how little of me must you think, honestly? I'm just going off. You're going I... off your past experiences. You're there not you going go off there. anything that I've done. Past experiences. I, I've, I've experienced it. So, Mr. Garrett, you're here to get some answers to questions. I am. Ms. Carter, you're here to prove that you haven't done any of these things you're being accused of. Is that correct? More so prove to him that I have been telling him the truth. Exactly. Yeah. So, if it comes out that you are, in fact, telling the truth, are you willing to move forward with Mr. Garrett? Absolutely, or I wouldn't be here. All right. All right. And to address Mr. Gurich's concerns about your infidelity, Ms. Carter was ordered to take a polygraph examination, and we have those results. Ron, would you please escort certified polygraph examiner Kendall Show into the courtroom? Good day, Mr. Show. How good are day, you? Good day, Your Honor. Thank you. Very it's good. good to see you. Right. Well, I noticed when you walked in that Miss Carter, she looked down, she looked at you, she looked down again. Are you nervous? Not at all. So you're ready to do this? Yeah, I'm a nervous person, but like, no, not at all. Mr. Garage, are you ready for the results either way? Yes, I am. All right. You asked Miss Carter, on the night Mr. Garage found you asleep in your lingerie, did you have sexual intercourse with another man? What was her response? She said no. What did the lie detector determine? The lie detector determined that she was being truthful. Good girl. <laughs> All right. You asked Miss Carter, were the handprints that Mr. Gurridge found on the hood of the car made by you having sexual intercourse with another man? What was her response? She said, no. What did the lie detector determine? The lie detector determined she was being truthful. <laughs> you look like I knew this. Yeah, your expression hasn't changed. Not at all. Right. I'm... Mr. Garrett, you looked a little surprised on that I one. I am. But happily surprised, right? Yes. All right. One more question. You asked Ms. Carter, other than the one time Mr. Garrett knows about, have you had sexual intercourse with any other man since you've been in an exclusive relationship? What was her response to that question? She said, no. What did the lie detector determine? The lie detector determined she was being truthful. <laughs> All right, Mr. Garage, what you gonna say to her? I'm sorry for judging you wrong, not trusting you. And um, I will make better judgments on your actions. And uh, I, I hope this will 
prosper into something good to get married or something or is that is that a proposal I heard? No, not a proposal. <laughs> oh, I was about to not say. A proposal. <laughs> You all are in a new relationship. You've been together for about a year. You've got a lot more years ahead of you than you've got behind you. If you're going to enjoy those years you have ahead of you, there's got to be some trust. I have nothing to hide. Mr. Garrett, I heard you say that you're going to have to be different in your judgment. And what I would say to you is stop judging. So I hope that you all will take advantage of the court resources we have so you can figure out how to open up and keep open those lines of communication. That's the only way these things work. I know Mr. Keller wish I'd stop communicating with him sometimes, but that ain't gonna stop, love. It's I'm not just telling stop. you. So as we say in this courtroom, do not cheat yourself out of an opportunity to have a happy, healthy, communication-filled relationship. Court is adjourned.